I'll be talking about Google Tag Manager, but just to give you a quick introduction, I'm Arnav. Uh, I have been working with WordPress for over 10 years now. Uh, started as a user of WordPress, then built uh, plugins, themes, and now I work at Bluehost, uh, where I lead teams uh, which build experiences on top of WordPress. So, just a quick round of questions. You know, how many of you know what GTM is or Google Tag Manager is, and how many of you use it like on your websites or? And how do you use that? If you just don't mind, you know, what all do you use it? Use Google Tag Manager for? Like maybe you can start. Okay. So some event happens, and we want to capture some of that data in our analytics, right? Uh, we want to maybe see it, you know, how many people have clicked a certain link, or how many people have, you know, visited a certain page. Uh, those page visits could be maybe from within the website, or maybe they are clicking on some link on Google, Facebook, anywhere across in the web. Or maybe like if someone's filling a form or they've submitted something, you would want to capture how many people have submitted a form. And then based on this data, we want to do something else, right? We want to target that specific user across the web using some remarketing campaigns uh, and so on and so forth. So we do all of this using tags. <coughs> Sorry. So tags is nothing but a set of or pieces of code which helps us uh, do all of this on our website. And please interrupt me or raise your hand if you have any questions. I'm uh, more than happy to answer it when I'm here or we can take some Q&A towards the end as well. Now just to give some examples of what, what kind of tags there are. So for example, you all of us might be using some analytics tools like Google Analytics. Uh, maybe there's a button. Just give me. So uh, we have a, like, let's, for example, there's a button on your website which says sign up now or maybe click here to submit something. So that's a button click which you, we would want to capture. And we would do it uh, by running a code which is nothing but an event tracking. So we would probably trigger an event on Google Analytics and then try to compare it to certain goals we might have set. For example, our, uh, some marketing teams would run a campaign saying they want 20% of the users visiting that page to submit a form. So we would track it against our goal. Or if you are doing some AdWord campaigns or you know, you're doing some Facebook campaigns, then you would try to optimize those campaigns based on the results you see. So this is, these are some of the examples of how, how we use tax today. So moving a bit forward, you know, why it should matter to you, right? Uh, we all build websites, we have customers, uh, or you might be building a website for your own use cases. And it's very important to have a good combination of tags and events uh, to capture all the information we need. So if you see on the, on the right, this is just an example of you know, how we've tried to capture certain data points. Now, if you see here, uh, it says that, okay, uh, from the direct channel, which means people searching about your website directly, uh, we have certain number of users coming in. From those set of users, you know, their behavior is what kind and how many users are actually converting. So all of this information across channels, like paid media channels or you know, some social media channels, we are able to capture because of certain tags we've put on our website. Now, this example is from Google Analytics. So we kind of use Google Analytics on this website and we've been able to capture this information uh, and break it down into multiple aspects to help us optimize our campaigns. So again, you know, uh, we use a lot of tags, right? Uh, there are Google Analytics tags, there are Facebook, then there's a Quora pixel which you might need to add, there's Twitter, there's Instagram. There's just so many things you can add to your website to track user behavior. And it also helps you remarket and uh, sort of target this customer in a unique way. But what ends up Again, I'm sorry for that. Looks like this is a bit, yeah. So what happens is if you add all of this onto your website, you would probably edit certain files on your website, on your WordPress site, and put all these tags in. And the challenge is your code becomes too cluttered. It becomes difficult to manage all of this. Uh, we ended up adding about 200 tags uh, for different use cases. And, and, and the code became a mess, right? We had like a huge file of you know, just adding tags and then events and everything. And uh, that's when we realized that uh, having it all in the code base is kind of not the best. And we started looking at some solutions. And then, you know, bottlenecks and delays. So uh, again, uh, I work at Bluehost. Uh, and, you know, uh, we are always behind, right? Uh, you always need to do something which you need yesterday. And depending on what, how you work and your processes, uh, not always can you comment uh, or commit to the code and sort of you know change it on the on the WP admin and sort of push your code immediately, right? You might follow a certain process of doing that, and that might result into delays. And then you know you might have certain campaigns which uh, your teams might need to run to actually promote the website. And uh, again, the deadline is always yesterday. So, and then organization itself, right? Uh, you have multiple kinds of tags. Uh, each tag might have different, and you'll go into triggers and so on. And organizing that, making sure you know it's understandable. Uh, like Abbas just took a uh, took a session about you know uh, how to write clean code. 
It's also important to have your analytics clean, have your events clean, else it just becomes a mess to understand what's happening. So again, you know, uh, these are some of the problems that people face today. And then debugging itself, right? Most of this is JavaScript code. Uh, you get a code snippet which you put on your website and starts uh, generating events and start generating alerts. Uh, figuring out where things went wrong uh, is always a challenge. Uh, when you open it in a browser, try to look at the source code, it's all minified, so you don't generally get a sense of where things are going wrong. And then if you put the code directly on your website, then chances of it impacting other JavaScript which you might be using is slightly higher. Now these are the challenges we face every day. Uh, how do we solve for that, right? And GTM is kind of one of the solutions which, are, which is kind of given by Google. It's Google Tag Manager, so it allows you to, sorry, hide all the complexity from your code and put it inside Google Tag Manager. Uh, we'll go into deep about how to use it and so on, but uh, this is just an example of how uh, we've used it for uh, Google Analytics. On the right, if you see, we just added Google Tag uh, Analytics, uh, sorry, Google Analytics uh, for a page view. So the, the, the screenshot on the right actually just triggers a page view event every time you visit a page, and it's as simple as that. Uh, not very complex, you don't need to add a lot of stuff to your code, uh, you just need to add one small snippet and you're done. Uh, it also has a lot of management tools. So for example, uh, you know, you can do version controls, uh, you can see the dashboard of Google Tag Manager. Uh, it allows you to show you what kind of changes have been done, how many tags you have, what has been added, what has been removed, has it been published or not, and, and we'll go into all what tag, triggers, variables uh, over the course of the next few minutes. And then integrations, right? Uh, like I said, uh, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, pixels which we want to add to our website to track users. Uh, Generally, each of the companies like Facebook, Google, uh, uh, Twitter, they all give their own JavaScript snippets which you can just add. But then Google Tag Manager has some out-of-the-box integrations available. So you don't need to really worry about the full JavaScript. There's just an ID which you can use to integrate. So it makes uh, life simple. And you don't need a developer or a team of developers to actually do this. Uh, anyone can do it themselves. And then debugging tools, right? Like one of the challenges we had was um, uh, we were not able to debug it uh, when we put a lot of code on our website. It became a challenge. So uh, we'll talk about some debugging tools on GTM, how you can sort of test and debug, and uh, how it will help you achieve, uh, take your things to production. Now, uh, how do you get started with GTM, right? Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that. But then the first, the first thing which you do is you try to figure out what you want to achieve. So for example, you have a form. So maybe you want to track how many people are submitting the form. So you make an inventory of all the things you're going to do. For example, uh, if you're doing tracking, then you might want to do a Facebook, you, want to, you might want to do a Twitter or Google Analytics. If you want to do re uh, remarketing, you'll focus on maybe uh, Google AdWords uh, and some other tools, right? Uh, like for example, if you're doing A-B testing, uh, Google Optimize is a good solution, Optimize is there. So you make an inventory of all these tools you want to use. That's how you get started. And then, you know, what do you want to do with these tools? So for example, uh, when you're using Google Analytics, you might want to trigger a page view, uh, you might want to you know, do some view tracking. If you're doing you know, uh, some kind of a marketing campaign, then you would want to track how many people are adding things to the cart and maybe dropping off, and that would result into some kind of cart tracking and remarketing campaigns for you. So there are certain you know, characterizations of what happens, <clears throat> and that's the kind of granularity. So you need to figure out what kind of detailing inf detailed information you need Plan for that before you even get started on you know, accessing the Google Tag Manager dashboard and so on. This will help you plan things a bit better. And then we get into, you know, when you open the Google Tag Manager itself, right, uh, there's a lot of ton of things which, you know, you, you suddenly get bombarded with information. So the moment you log into Google Tag Manager, the first thing which you need to really worry about is accounts. Now, <clears throat> talking about accounts, you might have a Google account uh, which you access Gmail, Google Calendar, all of those. And then you want to create a GTM account. A GTM account is an account basically which can have multiple sites within it. Uh, you can give access to multiple users and so on. Generally, the nomenclature is you have one account per website and one container in that account. Uh, and then what is containers, right? So it's a collection of all of this what we've discussed. So we have tags, we have triggers, we have variables. Uh, we have some configurations and all of that come together and that is what we call as a container. The container is kind of what we put on our website. When you put this container on a website, that can load all these tags, triggers, events, and then we can integrate Google, we can integrate Facebook, all of that within our uh, website itself. And we, <coughs> sorry, 
and we can uh, replace this with all the hard coded stuff which we might have done on the website today. And then within, when you launch a container, then there is something called as workspaces. Now what are workspaces? Let's say I am working on a specific uh, container trying to maybe integrate Google Analytics and my colleague is working on trying to integrate Twitter. There's a big chance that we might all overlap and then making sense of who's doing what becomes a challenge. So what ends up happening is to maintain good version history, there is something called as uh, workspaces. So you can create multiple workspaces. Each of the workspaces can be sort of uh, managed by a person or a team of people who are working on a similar uh, kind of a change. They can do their changes, they can test that independently and they can merge it into the default workspace. The default workspace is what goes live on the uh, website after you publish it. So this allows you to sort of keep certain things in the testing phase where maybe you are integrating something and trying things out. You put it on a different workspace which doesn't need to uh, sort of be published immediately. Whereas your other team members who are working on let's say a different kind of a, a change or a different kind of a, a tag, they can publish the changes independently without waiting for you to either reverse your change or uh, kind of complete your change. So this also helps ensure that, <coughs> sorry, this also helps ensure maintain version history so that in case something goes wrong and you put a wrong event or something, you can roll it back pretty fast. And then again, uh, to organize all of this, uh, we have folders. So you can maybe make one folder for let's say Google, you can make one folder for Twitter, you can make one folder for all the different companies you want to target. Or if you, depending on what your organization structure is, you can do it based on events and a different type of uh, 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 assets which are there. So it depends on what your organization structure is, uh, how you want to organize Google Tag Manager, but then you have options to uh, sort of uh, have folders and then uh, uh, place all these parameters within your folder. Unfortunately, right now it doesn't allow you to have a subfolder structure, so you can't have a folder within a folder. So that's one limitation which is there today. And then we come to, you know, how do you get all of this done, right? So we talked about how to organize GTM. But then the most important thing is how do we use it today? So triggers is kind of the starting piece. Now something needs to happen to do something, right? Uh, we saw that uh, early on. So triggers are those pieces of what we want to happen before we do something. So for example, some user would want to visit the website to trigger a page view event. Uh, that's the bare minimum, right? So the trigger would be some page visit happening. Or maybe it could be as simple as someone submitting a form and you track something. So this forms the basis of everything we want to do. And then there are different trigger types. There are trigger types which are available by default in Google Tag Manager, and then you can trigger, uh, you can create your own custom uh, types as well. Uh, if you see, uh, there's something like DOM ready, there's page view, uh, there's window loaded, uh, then you can also target specific elements like element visibility. So for example, if a person is scrolling down and he sees a specific element, you can actually trigger something based on that visibility as well which might be really important sometimes, maybe we have some add to cart button uh, loading below, uh, below the fold, so we want to see if the person has actually seen that button or not. So things like that is something which is available by default. You can use these as events and uh, we'll talk about how you can you trigger something based on these data points. And then there are firing conditions. For example, you would want to trigger something only on the success page or only on the page where the person is filling the card form information and not on every page on your website. So you can actually pick and choose what conditions you want uh, on which these events have to be triggered. So let's say, let's take an example that, you know, uh, we have an e-commerce website and you want uh, certain actions to be triggered only on the success page so that we know that how many people have successfully, you know, transacted and what is the amount. So then we can put in certain conditions that the page path should contain, uh, let's say, success uh, on, the URL para uh, on the URL and only then trigger uh, some of this. It allows us to, you know, have very, very fine-grained and granular uh, uh, triggers happening and then we can customize them based on our needs. And then if you see right, there's a ton of options available. It can contain certain things, it can start with certain uh, certain URL, you know, strings, it can not contain, so you have a ton of options available uh, to allow you to choose when a certain thing should fire. Yeah, you can. So you'll have to obviously figure out different kinds of events uh, on every page. So the, let's see the page where he's seeing the product uh, catalog, right? Maybe that's one uh, event where you fire, where you say, uh, view this product and then you can pass some data to, uh, uh, to the analytics event as well uh, if you want to pass the SKU or maybe the name of the product. And then when he pressed add to cart, you can trigger another event which says you know, he has added to cart. And then through his journey, you can trigger different uh, 
events uh, to actually uh, track him through the journey. Now, all of this will be visible in your analytics tool uh, with limitations. I think analytics doesn't allow you to do that more than like five uh, drops uh, in the free account. Uh, but then, yeah, you can break it down and uh, view all of that information as well. Yes. Uh, can you just take a mic? I can't hear you. ये scroll up, scroll down पे भी event triggers होते हैं या सिर्फ click पर हैं? आप configure कर सकते हैं, so you can do it on scroll up, scroll down as well. There are like event visibility triggers and you can create your own custom triggers as well. So again, scroll up, scroll down fires JavaScript events, so you can capture those and then you can trigger analytics events too. So options are there. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, when something is triggered, so will uh, will it give a feedback in like types of tags, right? Like I just said, uh, there are analytics. Then you want to maybe uh, integrate uh, Google Ads. So if you see, these are some of the by default tags which you can like Google gives you by default. And then there's a big marketplace where other community members have also submitted their tags which you can just inherit. Or if you want, at the bottom you can add your custom HTML or custom image as well. So if you're triggering an image pixel, you can just click on that. Or if you want to add some custom HTML, you can do that as well. Uh, <clears throat> so it natively supports a lot of uh, Google uh, Google uh, tools. So like Google Analytics and stuff is already available by default. If you see, this is just a new tag I'm trying to add, and it just uh, I've already connected this to my Google Analytics account, and it's trying to basically say what kind of tracking I want to do, uh, and then if I click Advanced, it will tell me what kind of rules I can add as well. Uh, if I want to exclude pages or include include pages like uh, you just asked. And then again, you know, custom HTML is just you get an HTML editor. You can put your HTML if you want to load certain pages. Like for example, a very very recent use case which we wanted to do was we want to add it, add a banner on certain specific pages of our website. Uh, but then we we tried different tools and we said we don't want to add more uh, JavaScript as well, right? It's always a concern. It will impact speed. Uh, how much data we pass to a third party vendor? So then we just used Google uh, Tag Manager to actually add some of our custom code for specific pages. So you have some of those flexibilities as well. And then we come to triggering, right? Uh, so for example, like I said, uh, uh, we have a page view. We want to exclude certain, certain pages or we want to include certain pages. So then there are triggers as to when this should trigger, the rules uh, to add as to when this should happen. For example, it can be based on page parameters. It can also be based on certain data which you pass to Google Tag Manager. So uh, as, as most of you guys might have used Google Analytics, uh, there is something called as data layer using which you can pass data to uh, these tools. So when you pass certain data, uh, data which we uh, which will cover in variables, these variables are what you can define and you can change the triggers based on that. So for example, if you don't pass a certain specific data, you can define it not to trigger, versus if you pass a specific data, then you can change your triggers as well. And then we come to variables. This is kind of uh, really important for all of us uh, because this will help us customize what we want to do on every page. So for example, some by default variables which we have is you know the host name, the path, the page URL. But then you can also define some of your custom variables as well. So for example, if you, if you talk about an e-commerce case, like the, one of the questions which came around, how can we track the user across uh, the whole flow, right? Across the whole buy process. So what you can end up doing is you can end up passing some of the things like which product is he adding to cart, or the amount of money, or the amount of you know, uh, certain quantities he's added to cart. Pass that as uh, variables. And these variables can be read by a Google Tag Manager. So for example, you know, if a person is adding two items to the cart, you can show him a different, complete different message and a complete different thing versus if he's added five items to the cart. Maybe if you want to sort of show some pop-up with some additional discount code or something, you can define it based on those parameters as well. And there's a lot of other built-in stuff as well. Uh, like for example, you know, if there are errors coming in, or, or you can define error URLs. Sorry. <coughs> Uh, so again, you know, if you just explore uh, Google Tag Manager, you'll see a lot of this. Uh, some of the stuff which already exists is in the selectors. So for example, if someone is clicking on a specific element or clicking on a specific class, so you can have some of those selectors available by default. And then you can define your own custom variables as well. So for example, you know, if you have something which you want custom, uh, which is not available in Google Tag Manager, you can just define it yourself and that becomes your custom uh, variable too. So you can pass some of that data, whatever you want, uh, customizable to your website. 
and then now now we come to the most important thing right what how do we integrate to our website so if you see this is how what this is what google gives us uh, it is a javascript snippet which we are supposed to add it to our code uh, if you just put it in your code base it can be wordpress or non wordpress google tag manager kind of starts working uh, but then again right we don't want to edit a lot of code uh, it defeats the whole purpose of using google tag manager as well so when we talk specifically about wordpress there are certain options we have we have certain plugins like uh, gtm for wp which allows you to sort of just install the plugin and if you see uh, there's a google tag manager id which is mentioned there uh, you can basically have a configuration on and off uh, you can just put the id there enable the plugin and that kind of uh, enables google tag manager for you uh, this is again available on wordpress org or uh, google also has a plugin called google site kit uh, which has an option for google tag manager uh, so you can integrate google tag manager pretty easily using this as well uh, you won't need to write any code on wordpress but then for people who avoid using plugins you know they feel plugins slow down their websites there are other options as well where uh, you can actually create a, a child theme and modify the functions.php uh, this is just a sample code snippet i'm not sorry for the size of the uh, the code snippet but basically you can uh, copy paste this and uh, uh, put it on your child theme uh, the reason why you put it on the child theme is so that if the primary theme gets updated you don't lose this out and things stop working on your website uh, but this is one of the other ways to uh, do it and the last way but not the recommended way uh, is actually put a block uh, don't do this uh, because then you don't know where it's going to load but it's still an option and it does work and then coming to your question of how how can we test this out so there are two three options uh, first of all google uh, when you uh, when you install google tag manager it has a tag assistant plugin uh, which you can install and experiment it uh, when you go to the website and click on that pl plugin uh, it will actually show you what kind of tags and everything so that will actually enable you to uh, see if the tag uh, manages loading correctly on your website or not uh, it also tracks google uh, analytics and some other tools but uh, useful for tag manager and then the last bit is testing uh, so you've just put all your tags you've you know done all the things which you want but you still want to test it before you take it live right uh, so there's a preview mode so uh, on google tag manager when you sort of have done all your work you've added all your triggers you've added all your events you can click on the preview button uh, it will emulate the whole setup but without taking it live to your customers so you can try everything out you can see all the data you can see everything but it's not visible to your customers it is only available in this preview mode once you're comfortable and you're ready that's when you pub publish this basically and we'll just cover some examples uh, quickly uh, so if you see uh, this is how we've kind of integrated uh, uh, google analytics so you connect with your google analytics account and it gives you some options so if you can see there's a tracking id and then uh, we've kind of configured that it should trigger only on certain specific pages so we have excluded analytics events on certain uh, internal pages or certain administration pages uh, so that's why there's a triggering filter there saying all pages views on this specific site uh, which is a kind of filter we have created on the other side uh, so this is exactly what we have done to track uh, clicks so if you see uh, it's another analytics event where we are saying that it's a type of event where it's type of uh, click the action is a click and then how do how are we defining the click is based on the label which if you see are variables so we have defined some custom variables saying the click test uh, text has to be exactly this and then below if you see we have actually specified that yes the click should be on the account and the profile section so we can actually track different areas of the site as well so for this what we are trying to track is how many people actually visiting the my profile section of the website so you can track different areas accordingly and i think that's about it uh, any questions you guys have yeah go ahead please so you can do that uh, not recommended again uh, but yes uh, that is possible taking your example the view host itself is a view host but your yes yeah so so for example in this case um, so the one of the examples in fact i'll just open it back and uh, show it to you so yeah if you see this right uh, there's a specific mention saying insight so we actually are sharing tags across bluehost.com and bluehost india and then this event actually triggers only for bluehost india so it is possible uh, it depends on then again you you have a slightly management overhead that you need to make sure that you are triggering your events the right way and having the right filters uh, so so for example you are saying let's say person visits site a and yeah, so, so it depends on where you are storing your data so google tag manager doesn't store your data google tag manager enables you to manage your tags your end data is still being stored on google analytics or some other tools which you are using right so then you'll have to look at that tool how that handover process happens 
maybe you can use different tag managers, like the containers can be different, but your Google Analytics account can be the same, the properties can change, so then you will be able to share your, uh, uh, share your data across those properties.